Okay, so this is the main panel, the 3030, and you have your DVC, the Digital Voice Command Center, with a microphone and a handset for the fire department. You guys won't really be messing with the handset. What this is for is if the fire department comes in response to an alarm and their radios don't have communication in the building, they can come over here and grab a handset from here, and then they have the plug-in devices um, in the stairwells and by the elevators that they can plug into and talk back and forth. And that's what these switches are for right here. If they plug in, it'll flash right here at what zone they're in, and they can touch that button and talk back and forth. So just so you guys know, if the fire department comes in and responds to an alarm, you can guide them to where the phones are. They're going to be able to tell it's, you know, it's labeled right here. It's pretty obvious. Just showing you guys. So there's three types of signals that come in on a fire alarm system. You have a fire alarm, a supervisory, and a trouble condition. So we'll start with troubles, it's the easiest one. A trouble can be anything. It could be low batteries, it could be a ground fault where a wire is touching ground, it could be an open circuit, a device is dirty, a device is missing. Mm -hmm. There's numerous uh, conditions that can cause a trouble on the panel. What's going to happen on the panel is it's going to be, you're going to have the trouble light system, trouble light come on right here. And the only thing you can do at that point is hit the acknowledge button. Acknowledge basically is just acknowledging that you know there's something wrong with the system and it silences the local piezo within the 3030 here. Mm -hmm. So you'll have a display on here too of what's wrong. It'll say, for example, device missing. It'll say no answer, loop one, device 65. All the devices in the whole building have labels that we put on them that have the loop number mm -hmm. and the device number. So it's easy to find them. Um, when there is a trouble condition, all of our information is on the front of the panel right here. Give us a call. This is also the, uh, whenever you want to do work on the system, if you guys are doing some soldering or painting, obviously cover up the smoke detectors, um, and then call this number right here, this 888 number, and this is your account number, the 692554. Just give them that account number on the phone and tell them how long you want to put the system on test for, and they'll, uh, they'll go ahead and do that for you. Now, a big thing I want to go over, because a lot of people ask me this question, I'm sure you guys know it, but when you put a system on test via the phone from the central station, it doesn't disable all the smoke detectors in the building. It's basically just telling us not to call the fire department if there is an alarm. Every time. So you still have to cover up the smokes if you're doing any kind of welding or soldering or painting. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so with that said, let's move on to the supervisory conditions. Mm -hmm. Supervisory condition is more of like a maintenance alert something you guys need to check out immediately if it comes in. The only two types of devices that you have here that will cause that is one, a sprinkler tamper valve. If someone closes a valve in one of the stairwells in the sprinkler system, that will cause a supervisory alert. You'll get the uh, supervisory light to come on. Once again, you can acknowledge it, just silencing the local piezo. The other major device that you guys have that's a supervisory device is all the smoke shakers in the guest unit, guest rooms. Um, and they're non-latching, so it's the same type of device almost as you have in your house. If, it's, if there's smoke, if you guys are cooking or someone's smoking, the device will go off, has a local piezo on the base, <coughs> excuse me, for the smoke in the room. And uh, once that smoke is cleared or the steam from the shower, that device will silence itself and it will reset itself on the system. So we call that non-latching. Mm -hmm. A fire alarm is the opposite, it's latching. Once you pull a pole station or smoke goes into a, a common area smoke detector or heat, they lock into alarm, the only way to get it to clear is to fan it out, um, to remove the source in the field and then reset the panel. So, so far you guys understand the difference between supervisory and trouble? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we'll move on to alarm. If you guys have any questions, you want to jump in at any time. Mm -hmm. So a fire alarm, that's the major one obviously. That's going to be caused from any device like a, like a pole station right here, a smoke detector in the common areas, not the ones in the guest rooms like we just talked about. Common areas would be the corridors, elevator lobbies, this whole um, back area you guys have, any smokes in there are going to cause a full-blown alarm. Now, the way the sequence of operation is set up on this particular system is the alarm that goes off that on that floor, it's going to be that floor and the floor above and below that go off only, mm -hmm. the audibles and the visuals. Mm -hmm. So if you have a, a smoke detector on the third floor, it's not going to evacuate the whole building. It's going to go on third, second, and fourth. Mm -hmm. Just so you guys understand that one. So if you're on the first floor, you're only going to get one and two. If you're on the seventh, you're going to get seven and six. So there's no floor above seven. There's no floor below one. Mm -hmm. So once it goes into alarm, that's where we come in with this paper right here. The first thing you want to do is acknowledge it. And that's, once again, is just going to stop the beating, the local piezo here. It's going to lock it on the display of what's in right now. So you're going to see fire alarm, smoke detector, fifth floor, you know, West Corridor by room 565, for example. That's what it's going to say. Okay. Also, when a device goes into alarm, it has a solid red light. Right now, if you watch the one above it, it's going to flash about every six, seven seconds. It flashes green. <laughs> when it goes into alarm, those two LEDs will lock in red. Okay. Same thing with the pull station. You can see the little flashing green light behind it. Once you pull it, that light will flash red. So, or uh, stay solid red, I'm sorry. 
So that makes it easier to when you're walking down the corridor to find out where the device actually is. So you have the description on the panel plus the LEDs to help you. Um, now I did just talk about the sequence of operation house floor of alarm above and below. The only three devices that have a, that are different that are actually full evac are the three pole stations in the building. There's only three. There's one here. There's one at PBX, and there's one at the by your guys' main re, uh, registration Project, desk. Right? Yeah. So if you pull that, um, it's going to evacuate all seven floors. Everything's going to go off at one time. And the reason for that is, if there is a fire on let's say the third floor, and you guys investigate it, and you find there is a fire in the building, you guys can come and pull that pole station, and obviously evacuate the whole building before mm -hmm. the fire spreads, which it shouldn't because of the spray. So and when in doubt, pull it. Yeah. I mean, if there's any doubt, just pull it. Yeah. I mean, I would once there's a, an alarm. Exactly. To, um, to be on the safe side. Yeah, I mean, I would investigate it first, acknowledge it here, sure. don't silence it. And yeah. I don't know how this, how Millbrae is. I know San Francisco is real strict on silencing and resetting the alarms. They want to make sure that they, the fire department actually gets out here before you silence anything, just in case. Even if it is a false alarm, I think um, Reggie's looking into that, actually, I know. Because I think there's a charge for... Yeah, well, false, alar that. false alarms, I think, yeah, it was like a $1,000 charge yeah. or something like so that. So we don't want them coming out. Yeah. And then in the past, <laughs> what we did is we'd investigate if it was a false alarm. We wouldn't contact the fire department. But now yeah, just the fire department yeah. will be notified. Yeah. And now they're automatically notified. Yeah, and that's the next thing I was going to get into is now you have a dialer which is located behind this panel here. It's hooked up to two phone lines, and that's the whole point of putting the system on test. If there's an alarm, it's an immediate thing. The, the panel's already sent a signal to our central station, and our central station's on the phone with the fire department. So if you find, let's say, for example, you're doing some solder work and you forgot to cover a smoke, and you know it's a false alarm for sure. You can call this number and try to call the fire department off. Just call the number, give the account number, say, hey, we have a false alarm. Can you call off the, the fire mm -hmm. engines, you know, see what they can do. Most of the time it's not possible because they're already on the way, rolling, yeah. but it's uh, worth a shot if you know it's a false alarm. Okay. So, let me, oh, so, so for the supervisory conditions, once again, it's just um, for the sprinklers and then for the smoke detectors? Smoke detectors in the guest rooms uh, only and the sprinkler tamper valves. Sprinklers. A sprinkler water flow, there's two different devices on a, okay. on a sprinkler system. A water flow is basically like a switch that's inside the pipe. Once a sprinkler head breaks, the system's always got water in it. In the, in the sprinkler system. So once a head breaks, that water is escaping. Okay. And when the water is refilling itself from the city, there's a switch inside the pipe, a little flapper valve that after, you know, between 30 and 90 seconds, that flapper valve is activated from the water flow, and that's a full-blown alarm. That That is about the most severe case alarm you can get. And that's pretty obvious there's something wrong. Um, this is a speaker system. You don't have horns, obviously. There's a lady's voice that comes on. I think you guys probably heard it when we were testing. There's a couple whoops, and then it's a lady's, a female voice, basically saying, attention, attention, there's been a fire report in the building. While this is being investigated, please evacuate the building, use the stairways, not the, ex not the elevator. Some sort of line like that. So there's no, we don't need to come back here and make that announcement? No, the system will automatically make the evac announcement. It's kind of creepy. Yeah, so that's one, that's one thing that I think it was like Rod and, and Reggie were kind of, they want to call Marge about that and see if they can change that to say something like, basically stay where you are while the team is investigating it. Uh, we'll let you know if there's an alarm. And once you guys find out there's an alarm, then you can get on the microphone and mm -hmm. let people know to evacuate. So they're working on that. We yeah. can't make that call because Marge, you know, she designed the system and I can't go above that. So once she makes that call, we can definitely reprogram it any way you guys need it. Sure. Okay. So with that said, the microphone, if you guys want to do an all call, there's a button right here. You hit the all call button and this is going to light up all these lights right here. You got first floor through uh, seven floor speakers, the four stairwells, and the elevator cabs. Okay. Go so ahead. once you hit that, I'm just away for you. I'm in the fire control room uh, with the training for fire life safety. Okay. So all call. You pick up the microphone, hit the all call button. Once you key up the mic, you'll be talking to every speaker circuit in the building. Okay. If the building is an alarm and you have a floor, like let's say for the third floor, for example, you're going to have third, second, and fourth in alarm. The speakers will be going off and the strobes will be going off. If you hit this button, page active uh, evac areas, it'll just page those specific floors, and that's an easy way to call off people in a false alarm situation. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that, yeah, go ahead. Let's see. First floor through seventh floor speakers, you just hit this button. I don't want to do it now because it, no, no, no. it yeah, so yeah. if you hit this button and once you keep the mic, you can talk to just the seventh floor. Okay. When you're done, just hit the button again and it'll go clear. Yeah. And then, 
This one's an off-call. This will light up everything. And this one will just do, like, for example, if you have a third floor going off in alarm, it's going to activate second, third, and fourth automatically, like, per the sequence of operations. So what this does, by pushing this button, instead of activating all of them, it just activates second, third, and fourth. It pages the active evac alarm. Okay. So that's an easy way, for example, if the third floor is a false alarm and you know it, you can hit that button and just talk to second, third, and fourth and say, hey, there's been a false alarm report in the building. You guys can go about your business and then reset the system. Um, let's see. I mean, that basically covers the gist of it. You guys have the same display in PBX and the, mm -hmm. and the other. I know up front you wanted us to turn off the piezo and control, so we did that. So now I think we need it back on because okay. there's a period of time that the phone calls are forwarded from command center okay. to the front. So that gap of time we can't really have. Okay. So you want so, me to turn the piezo and, yeah. and control, or yeah. just the piezo? Well, tell me what each one. Well, piezo is just going to have it beep, so it draws your attention to it. You'll hear it beeping, and someone will look at it. Control, you can actually use the buttons like PBX. You can silence, reset, scroll. I think we want to have both of them. Okay. Um, just so that that MOD has that autonomy. And this would only be on overnight that, that they would be responding to it because that's the only time that the phones get forwarded because we have that person on break. And okay. then there's another 15 minute break, so it's actually about 45 minutes. Actually, it's an hour. So, yeah, we definitely, I want to make sure that everything is covered. And I hadn't thought about it until one of my uh, managers mentioned it to me. Okay, Sorry. we can do that for sure. Go so. ahead. I'm actually in training right now. Can you grab contact information, please, or ask the guests to wait? I will. I can be out in about uh, ten minutes, maybe. Okay. If you can wait five or ten minutes, I can be. I can be there. Yeah, so we should get about five more minutes. Okay. So you guys have seen the. Just like your paper shows, you got the acknowledge, mm -hmm. signal silence, reset. Mm -hmm. The three buttons up here. You can also use these soft keys. What happens is this panel, you got the nice one. So what happens is when things come up on the system, these soft keys with these arrows on the side, depends. Like for example, right now you can go to main menu from this button right here mm -hmm. or back to the graphic screen. But what happens is these soft keys will, things will pop up. Like if there's an alarm, it'll be flashing, acknowledge, acknowledge. You just push the button, they don't be flashing silence or reset. You just pick the one you want. So it makes it really easy to walk you guys through it mm -hmm. instead of having to just use these red buttons on the side. Okay. Now, if you guys are ever required to do a fire drill from the fire department, which I doubt because we're going to be doing annual testing for you guys, just in case you want to know, there's a drill button right here. If you hold that button down for two seconds, it'll activate all of the uh, silenceable signals in the building. Okay. So just be careful with that one. Don't hold it down. That's why they make it for two seconds. It's kind of hard to mistake a button and hold it for two you seconds. Might hit it by mistake. Exactly. Yeah, I'm holding it down. So as long as you guys are clear on the buttons, mm -hmm. the three different types of alarms, you know that the pole stations are uh, fully vac. Mm -hmm. um, that's a big one. Uh, the batteries are located in these cabinets. The amplifiers for the speakers are located in the ventilated cabinet over there, and the red cabinets are power are power supplies for the strobes on the first floor alone. Okay. Um, and all these key, all these things are locked. And they are locked, and all the keys are right here. So the gold keys are for the red cabinets, and all the black cabinets that you see in the building are all keyed alike with the one notifier key. Okay. There's just a couple sets here. So if you guys want to, I don't know what red you want to do with those, but maybe the engineer could take one for each of you guys and put it on your keychain. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can see the one that's in here for the batteries. Um, this one, it's all the same, so the same key for everything. Okay. All the black cabinets. That makes it easy. The other thing. Um, I forgot to mention is if you have a printer on site, so this is really nice. So anytime anything happens, this mimics exactly what happens on the screen. It'll print it out. So you can always hit the tear button right here. And what that will do is print it out enough for you to grab it and look at what happened. Um, just make sure it's got paper all times. I mean, the paper lasts a long time. We're also in the process of getting our as-built completed right now from our office down in Huntington Beach. Once those come in, we'll be putting them in this tube right here so you always have them on site. Okay. Um, Instructions that we gave you guys right here are located right here in this pamphlet with our contact information below, and also the 3030 and the DVC operation instructions are right there on the wall. Okay. So, that said, if you guys have any questions, pretty straightforward. Yeah, it is pretty easy. It's a real okay. nice system. Actually, I have the uh, California high rise fire safety 
director certification. Okay. Yeah, I'm one so you're good. the only one in the building with that certification. So you're good to go. I think. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, th that's yeah, done in L. Okay, thank yeah, you. It's done only in uh, L. A. and uh, San Francisco. Oh, okay. yeah, I have that sort of good. Yeah, through my union. Yeah. All right. Even though we're not a high rise, it's that's what I took the train. What do they consider a high rise in the city of uh, Millbrae? Yeah, it's one more floor. One more floor. Right. One more floor. Okay. Then, yeah. All right. Because we're seven. Well, that went easy. Oh yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'm pretty familiar with s the systems in general, so yeah, they're really easy. Especially the new ones are so easy to operate. I mean, everything I is like all so straightforward. That you one know, you had before was oh, so old. Well, and not always the same person would get on the internet.